Polygon Pythagoras. Let him mash. Yeah, put your cash. Yeah. I seen the metaverse through metatope, my eyes a megaphone Customize my empty skin to optimize my flesh and bone Phase one evolution, revolution Smart contracts inside your smartphone Phase one evolution, revolution Help me, help me, phone Whole body markerless, motion capture The metaverse broken after the metatope golden era The whitelist still open, hurry up what you need, golden chariot Holy virgins that's holding cherubims, paving the road with fairy dust Create, create the avatar of your wildest dreams, yeah And use it inside your live stream and yeah. all your metaverses, favorite games, and widescreen. Metatope, visualize your digital. By listening to the following, you are acknowledging that the comments, opinions, and analyses expressed by Metatope LLC, its representatives, or any other contributor are for informational purposes only and should not be considered individual investment or legal advice or recommendations to make an investment or adopt any investment strategy. You should be aware of the real risk of loss when buying and selling any assets, including but not limited to NFTs, tokens, or securities. Always conduct your own research and strongly consider seeking the advice of a financial or legal expert. And now, here's Crypto Chris G with Tope Talk. What up, what up, what up? Happy 8-24-2023, 10 p.m. I uh, hope everyone's having a fantastic Thursday. I just got out, during that when we first started this up, I got a phone call from Coco. So hopefully uh, he said he wanted to pop in and hang out. So he'll probably jump in a little bit. We'll see some people pop in from that. Uh, but as of now, yeah, average crypto is MIA. Uh, I think he lost money on a on a shit coin and is a uh, is a uh, you know feeling the feeling the depression of uh of that. So maybe he'll pop in, maybe he won't. It is what it is. But we're chilling, we're having a good time. Um, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the welcome to episode sixty two. I can't believe it. We're keep we're moving on and moving on and moving on and getting closer to a hundred, which would be pretty crazy. How you doing, crypto medic? What's up, my brother from another mother, my sisters from other misters. Good to be here. Loving the Thursday. You know, starting to get the scent of fall. You know, I don't know. It's still like 180 degrees here. But, you know, starting to see the, the preseason football. Like, I know it's around the corner. I see the Halloween stuff in the stores. I'm looking forward to the cooler weather. I hear you, man. I... I, I... I remember, like I, I thought it was gonna be cold in New York when we uh, went up there for um, NFT NYC, and or no, it was like no, it was a uh, was it NFT NYC or, or was it the uh, D Gods thing? But anyway, I think it was D Gods, and I brought like a a bunch of cold clothes. Like I bought it. I went on like Young LA, you know, looked in the sales I had a sales section of the website, found some cool stuff. I went, but then I I went to Aloe, like a like a bozo and accidentally bought a uh i say accidentally you know i was i was not forced beyond my will but uh um yeah i walked out with a puffer jacket and that was not cheap and i i've worn it once or twice twice i've worn it twice that's about it and that is uh i thought we had more cold times but nope i am ready just like you are to get back to the cold weather florida cold weather is 72 degrees at that point anything below 70 we're putting on flannels and then anything below 65 we got the ski jackets out People walking around like they're ready to go down some slopes on, uh, you know, out in Denver or something. But they got their goggles like attached to the side of their head just in case. Uh, but yeah, what's going on, Enzo? Thanks for joining. How you doing, man? Yo, what is up? So, uh, Crypto Medic is like winter time. Like what, ninety-seven degrees for you? Is that what cold weather is for you guys? But uh, I we've been seeing some some nice weather here. We're uh, right around the corner, getting rid of winter. Uh, thankfully, so yeah, the it's been heating up. Uh, actually, earlier today, Shelly was like, "Oh, we got Tope Talk today. We're gonna hear Crypto Medic say hello, my brother from another mother." <laughs> and we actually tried to debate why it's called a brother from another mother and not another father, because both of them rhyme. I'm just curious now, because you have said it again now. <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that's just the way it was told to me. Wow, wow, wow. You guys uh, really know how to bring the heat of a, of a, of content here, boys. <laughs> uh, let's jump in. Uh, we're missing Walker. Not sure if we're going to get market analysis today. Um, I've, uh, I guess I can go into some market analysis of the uh, DeFi world uh, right now. Currently, uh, we are seeing a coin taking over the new meta. You know, basically Pepe, as of today, has some crazy news came out about an hour ago. 
that they have started offloading onto OKX, Bybit, and Binance, um, the team tokens out of a uh, multi-sig, which is crazy. That's like huge, 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 uh, and a big no-no in the space. So um, yeah, the price is plunging. A lot of that liquidity is now moving into a coin called Shia. It's at an all-time high right now. This minute just hit an all-time high. Um, there, the, the market cap is 4.1 billion because 95% of the coins are in a are not circulated. This is this is uh, the creator of this coin is Carlos. He was a he won League of Legends tournament. Has about half a million Twitter followers. He ran a gaming studio for half a half a billion. Um, and he launched this coin with some Dubai friends, I think. And now it looks like all the Pepe money is panicking, selling, and moving into this coin, which seems to be the next big thing. As they've created a game called Shia Crush, uh, I think in February they created this because there's pictures uh, circulating where they had Shia, uh, Shiba, uh, Shiba Saga, which is the name of the coin. Uh, it was on the step and repeat. And these guys, this guy's really close with the Andrew Tate brothers, by the way, Enzo. Um, so they're like best friends. So there seems to be a lot of hype moving into this specific coin. Um, looking to see, you know, how I've never seen anything like this because it's, all right, we have, we've seen stuff with XRP, but this is pretty crazy because Pepe, you know, everyone had a lot of faith in that. And it looks like that is now uh, insane that the, 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 the wallets are moving around into offloading into cash. So, you know, I guess guys, like, what do you guys think? You think Pepe's over with? You think this is something uh, that they're going to claim, you know, uh, they needed to pay for, uh, you know, hospital bills. What do you think is going on? Coco in the house. What's up, brother? Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I think that uh, like every other meme coin, eventually it runs out and the money jumps ship to the next big thing. What's going on, guys? What did you say something? Yeah, but this is team tokens. A little different because the team is moving around stuff. And I mean, this is all you got articles about this now on. Um, uh, on CoinDesk, so CoinDesk has already picked up on the the wallets moving. Yeah, and yeah. What do you think, Coco? How you doing, bro? Welcome to the stage. What's up, guys? How you doing? What's up? How's everyone doing today? We chilling, man. A little little slow start today, but we chilling. Yeah. So so I've been following it since the beginning because uh, you know I hold a substantial Pepe bag, um, and like I'm pretty honest with my assessment. I would say so. Like, I you know like when you when you sometimes things are a lot simpler than you then people make them out right and I've, I've thought about all the different scenarios in my head and the, there's no other reason why a team would send 15 million worth of coins from the multi-sig wallet of pepe to multiple different sexes centralized exchanges uh, during like a 65 70 percent dip if they weren't gonna slowly unwind those and and dump those coins for profits because here's the thing like you send coins to the exchange when you have so much buy pressure that the market maker needs more coins because people are buying and then taking them off exchanges and you need more liquidity. Like if you're in a big dip and there's not a lot like Pepe's like buying and like its volume has been like it's it's been down, you know, like there hasn't been a lot of buying and selling on the DEXs um, and it's and it hasn't been as viral as it, it's been previously. So like there's no other reason why you send those coins that much of those coins to the sexes and multiple sexes, right? Unless, you know, you have a plan to send it to your market maker and, you know, slowly take profits. So, I mean, I think it's reflected in the price. Um, and I think also like from the perspective of the guys on the team, like think about it, man, they had one of the most legendary run-ups in the history of meme coins. Right. And they were still sitting at a four or $500 million market cap. So they're probably sitting there looking at the overall picture and saying, we should take some of this money off the table. Like we should, we should like take this money off the table because if it goes even any lower, we can buy it back and maybe market make it. Maybe they'll do the right thing, but I can't see any other reason for them to, at this point, you know, send that, that much money worth of coins to the sexes. And, you know, it's just, I, I know what they're doing. Like I've seen this, they're, they're going to slowly sell those and, Maybe it'll affect the price. Maybe it won't, but it's definitely not bullish. Yeah, it's pretty insane. It's definitely not bullish. And it looks like, like I was saying before, a lot of that, some of the bigger whales moved over to the other coin through Carlos. He posted some stuff about it, but that's pretty crazy to think like that. Uh, that coin is losing a lot of trust and, uh, and it's going to be probably 
Twitter timeline full of drama about Pepe people for the next two days straight until they, you know, they feel they've gotten it out. But what's going on? Thanks for jumping up, Average. What's, what's going on, bro? How's uh, how's everything life? And uh, are you ready to go to Miami tomorrow? Bro, I'm ready. Uh, Coco's getting on a plane in a few minutes, so he's going to oh, be he there. He is, isn't he? Oh, Dude, he's coming. Oh. Yeah, he, he said he'll be there. Um, he promised everybody he'll be out in Miami, so um, we'll be happy to see Coco in Miami. Um, yeah, but yeah, everything's going good, bro. Sorry, Coco. Yeah, I'm not making it, boys. I wanted to go, but it's just I can't do it this time. I'll be at the next one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so that was uh, one of the bigger things in the news uh, what, that was breaking is that uh, situation with Pepe. Another interesting piece of news uh, in the crypto space is the Basin Optimism revenue sharing agreement that was reached today. Uh, looks like under the agreement, Base will pay 2.5% of its revenue or 15% of its profits, whichever is greater. And in return, Base will receive up to 118 million Optimism tokens thereby giving the network a voice within Optimism's protocol. Uh, Coco, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, is this something uh, I don't really understand, like, what they're trying to accomplish here personally? So they're doing a revenue share. I haven't even looked at this. They're doing a revenue share with, with Coinbase, Optimism, because they're the yeah. chain that they forked it from, right? Yeah, so they're doing a, they're doing a revenue share. Um, to basically, and, and both organizations have vowed to create a security council to safeguard the ecosystem. Sounds pretty centralized to me. Um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I, I don't have enough information on it. <laughs> no, I feel you. I just it, yeah. it, that's coming from Coin Telegraph, so you know, you know, they don't give they don't give too much information either. <laughs> but uh, we also have some some of the homies from uh, SAF crew in the in the building here. What's going on, Grim? Yo, what's up, gang? How are you all? We chilling, bro. How's it going uh, for you, bro? How was your Thursday? Uh, it's Friday here. It's Friday morning. Just heading to this convention. I'm just walking through the city right now. It's a bit loud. Mind the um, background noise. Sorry about that. You're good, bro. So what, what kind of convention are you going to? Uh, cybersecurity. I'm in that industry. Oh, nice, bro. Nice. Well, I hope you have a good time there, man. Uh, did, what you been up to? Did you, uh, did you do any, did you look at any coins lately? Um, I've been pretty AFK for the last two days, but still buying the XRP dip like a maniac. Uh, just... well, speaking of XRP, is it, Coco, is they, they got an OKX uh, listing? Is that what I read? Well, no, they're, I think it's like a Web3 partnership, but I mean, that's basically the first step to the OKX listing, I think. Um, one of the cool things about XRP, like, because everyone knows I follow that coin pretty heavy. I was an early adopter. Um they, so like the, one of the biggest things that they were people were complaining about was their holder count wasn't that big for their for their market cap. Their holder count has doubled in the past week, so they're at like forty two hundred holders now. And like when a coin has a correction and the holder count actually goes up, that's extremely bullish. You know what I mean? So like it means that there's more distribution. It means that the floor is stronger. It means that there's more people getting involved in the project. So like I think XRP is super bullish and it's a nice entry point right now. For the amount of stuff that that team's done, it's it's I've never seen a team like do so much in such a short period of time. So, um, all signals from them is everything's looking good. Um, I wanted it to correct, honestly. I, I think it went up too fast. It's better that they correct now, so that they can climb, right? Um, but yeah, they also got back on Dex Tools trending. They were blacklisted for Dex Tools trending for some reason, and now they're back trending on Dex Tools again. So that's also bullish. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, no, I'm I'm I'm. That's one of the bags that I'm most bullish on. And it's not even about the project. It's about how the team executes. Um, just, I just see like, I just see the way they move and like they, they, they are just so hungry to be like a top coin and that can go a long way. Yeah. And it, it seems like they can uh, potentially capitalize on some of this Pepe stuff going on, you know, I feel like people well, start moving around funds well think about it right like if they go down into like the low threes right or mid threes right so what's under 400 million right now and bitcoin's ath is like 180 million right like you know the harry potter one that's literally a 1x to to be at the same market cap as them so like it, it's definitely losing substantial um 
it used to be like like Pepe was like the Bitcoin of all the memes, right? Like it's not even correlated to Pepe anymore. You remember when Pepe would pump, then all the other memes would pump, and then when Pepe would dump, then it would be bad for all the other memes. It has there's literally zero correlation to how Pepe is doing to all the other memes at this point. So you know the market changes fast, and uh, there's these are like indicators that you need to look at when you're talking about taking positions in in different meme coins is is like what's correlated to what Pepe literally is just its own thing at this point. So I'm a, I'm not very bullish on it right now, but I still think it could have a run up, you know, in the bull market if the team puts their foot on the gas. But as of now, I'm, I'm not really too bullish on it and I hold a bag. So I'm literally flooding my own bag, but I'm also trying to be as honest as possible. Uh, for sure. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah. One thing to add to that um, about new holders coming into XRP. Megalodon tweeted something recently and I commented underneath it saying, um, give it a couple more days, let the jitters really like jeet out and let the new holders come in. So I think it might dip for a little bit more or might go sideways just for a couple more days and then we'll see what happens. Because when I tweeted that, Megalodon liked it as well. So it must mean, it must mean something. What do you think it means? I reckon we might dip a little bit more. Just let the really the big bag holders, let them really fully jeet out. And then get new holders in. I reckon sometime next week we'll start pumping again. Yeah, I mean, I think so too. I mean, I don't know. I can't really speculate on the timelines because, you know, nobody can predict that. But I definitely think that a lot of people are looking at posi- trying to take positions on that just because they see how active the team is, bro. Like, it's the most active team I've ever seen for a meme coin. Yeah, they're literally on crack. <laughs> Uh, that could be – we don't know. Let's, there's no confirming or denying what they are doing. Um, but let's uh, – let's, <laughs> before we go down that rabbit hole, let's let's uh, let's talk about something uh, a little bit different. I mean, what do you guys uh, – what do you guys see on the NFT side of things? I mean, I haven't been really paying attention at all outside of, like, uh, the, the main headers of uh, DJ, or D-Gods and, um, you know, Yuga Labs. But we got a uh, – we got this event this weekend, right, for Yuga and ASAP Ferg on uh saturday night and then there's a community by the mutant cartel community event friday night uh tomorrow night um i'm really excited not only to see people that we all know in the industry that are into these irl events but also you know i'm really interested to see the kind of the market sentiment of the board apes from some of these holders obviously i can tell who's biased and who's not but i mean i'm really interested to kind of have some conversations and just see what they're doing and uh how they how they feel i I mean it's I mean, we're going to be at an outside venue and it's going to be 90 degrees outside of Miami. So uh, I don't think everyone's going to be wearing their hoodies. And if they are, they're absolutely crazy. I mean, what are you going to do, average? Are you going to wear a, are you going to, are you going to try to fit in with like a black hoodie, maybe draw a board ape on the back of it or? Um, yeah, I just that? bought a, um, I just bought like a velour hooded sweatsuit. Um, I'm, you know, I, I'm trying to like trim down uh, for the next couple of months going to winter strong so I'll, I'll be i'll be in a velour hoodie uh track suit definitely oh, fantastic so you, yeah so you're almost like promoting the sweat just uh remind me not to hug you at any time yeah no definitely uh i'll definitely have to come towel ready for sure um i love what you guys were talking about a second ago and i wanted to tap into that like the base optimism thing yeah like, please do dude i i'm watching base chain closely every day and the volume is is creeping up drastically on base. The TVL is creeping up drastically. I'm I'm I've been wrong in the in the past, but I think that base chain is going to steal the show in the next bull market. Um, I know, like I know, a lot of people don't like the um, the the KYC element of um, of Coinbase and and all those things and the privacy part of it. Um, but I think that we know that Coinbase is already developing a way to onboard people from the app onto the chain. So like a seamless way for kind of normies to interact with on chain. Um, and we know they have a ton of capital to be able to like to, to market the thing and make it work. And um, people are building over there. So I'm seeing a lot of exciting stuff happening on base. And th- I'm, I'm that's really where I'm trying to start to like move move a lot of my bags is to early base projects yeah i mean it seems like they're gonna have if they do it right they can they can get stuff moving quickly i mean 
not to like let's i know this is kind of like a touchy thing when it comes to like you know only fans but i'm just gonna say it like with transparency like i know specifically like web3 only fans girls that are absolutely capitalizing on friend.tech i mean that is a base token and it is in, in a base platform so imagine when that becomes simpler and easier for like influencers to onboard into where you can own shares and they're getting they're getting paid off like trade volume uh, that's that's pretty interesting so um, there's already some use cases already happening but I, I i would love to see uh just that they that base really gets something out there that is a lot more with a, a user a better user experience if they're really going to capitalize on onboarding uh onto like different things like friend.tech because i mean it does have it has potential but even now that platform is absolute baloney i mean to be real with you yeah, I mean, it definitely has some development um, that needs to be done around the platform, but the utility is super cool. Like, if you find if you find the right accounts to follow, like I'm following one one person that shares Alpha, and the way it, it's the only person, in fact, I've I've seen it have set up this way. They have a private TG for all of their holders, and their holders get Alpha first. So, um, you, when you go into their friend tech and go into the chat. You get the the Telegram link instantly. It's the it's the only message in there, and then you move over to the Telegram, and there's like you know how many ever holders of uh, of the key have access to that Telegram chat, and it's pretty sick. Yeah, I feel you, Coco man. Did you ever uh, put a, a twenty ETH clip in the Shia, bro? <laughs> this thing is out of control. Yeah, I put. I, I didn't do twenty, but I put ten ETH. Nice. Did you catch <laughs> to get, it? Like, just to get some exposure. Dip? Huh? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I threw a buy order in at two billion market cap, and that's where it double bottom, and that seems to be it. Yeah, I think it'll run. I just, uh, I'm not like, I don't know. I, it's weird because like I'm more bullish on like projects that are like kind of super like crypto kind of culture, like dialed into like crypto culture and like like the actual people in crypto. I just, I think it's, I think it's gonna do well, like. I just, I think like, I don't know, I, I'm not, I'm not as bullish, but I, I, I got some exposure just because I could see them just pumping it, like just not caring and just pumping yeah. it, you know, like I just, yeah. I'm not as bullish on like their brand and their style as I am some of these other meme coins, because I think that'll take meme coins farther is if they have like a legit style and they play to the culture. But I, I mean, I'm not, I, they're probably going to pump that thing to Valhalla, you know, they got a lot of, oh yeah. They got a lot of friends, it looks like. And interesting enough, like with them being friends with Top G, our boy Enzo here is going to be a Top G soon. So, you know, I think uh, Enzo's probably going to be looking at this one if he hasn't already, like, looked at Shia. Whoa, my Hi. Shia bag is up incredibly. Holy smokes. I didn't even know this was happening. Yeah. I actually didn't know about this till you brought it up. And, uh, yeah, I... I'm I'm looking at it. I just had a question for uh for Coco specifically. I mean, Coco, how do you feel? Uh, do you do you like uh utility coins or is it just strictly memes? Like you prefer memes with no utility? No, I dude. It's funny. Like I'm not like a like a all. It's funny because everybody, a lot of people know me from from SAF and shit coins are fun, but um, I'm a trader first. Like I've always been a trader first, but. I actually build stuff like I build like protocols and dApps. I've worked it as like a director at blockchains and I've done a lot of that kind of stuff. Like I'm a builder too, but I, I mean, I'm the way that I look at it is after being in this industry for like better part of a decade is like, I follow the liquidity. I, I look, I follow the money. Like that's where you're going to find the most action. That's where you're going to find the most movement. And in a cyclical industry and an ever changing industry, like following the money will always put you where the excitement's at crypto is is a big dopamine high at the end of the day right like so you follow where people are getting the most dopamine you look for it and then you you know you you figure out where you fit in in that area of the, of the industry it's um it, i don't know it's just kind of how i am like i i feel like i'm agile enough to move around and like do everything um just because i love crypto so much so i don't care if it's a utility project if it's a meme coin if i think it's bullish it's bullish right and at the end of the day, like a project doesn't need a utility in order to be successful. It needs a community that believes in it and a belief system. Right. So utility is great because that can that can like, you know, 
I guess it can galvanize that that belief system and galvanize that community and, and give it actual use case. But you know, memes have been proven to not need utility. Um, so I guess it just depends on what side of the market you're on. But like if you're talking DeFi, yeah, utility is important for the coins. Um, so it, it just it just varies. You know, I, I don't really kind of draw a line in the sand anywhere. Okay, yeah, I got you. Just uh, I've been seeing some uh, utility coins and uh, AI coins pop up, so I was just kind of curious if you followed those or not. Uh, that was the main reason for the question. I think the ones that are done really well are gonna do great. Like a lot of so there's a lot of Telegram bots popping up right now, and some of them are gonna just fail. But there's actually some really cool ones that are popping up too that are super useful. So like those things, as long as they have like a really good kind of cyclical revenue stream that's that's um that it, that's not going to be like oh, I, I'm, I'm losing my words here it, that's that's going to be sustainable yeah sustainable like if they have a cyclical revenue stream where they can like pump their fees that they generate back into into their project that's sustainable like i'm super bullish on that type of stuff because you know with utility does come fees and with those fees they can actually make the project more sustainable if you look at some of the DeFi project products and, and protocols from 2021 that were highly successful, they're all underwater because what they did is they just inflated a bunch of coins, giving people a lot of yield, but it wasn't sustainable, right? So I'm I'm bullish on products and you know protocols that have revenue streams that can make that product sustainable by the people using it, right? Like the people using it pay a certain fee for said utility, and that fee goes back into the product to make it sustainable, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, no, that, that makes absolute sense. Uh, I I started off in DeFi before getting into NFT, so I, I understand non-sustainable products that just offer a high APY because uh, I got wrecked on a lot of those. Yeah, that's, that's you know, that's uh, those will be non-existent here in the next 12 months, right? Like, the only things that are going to be sustainable in DeFi are things that offer real yield, and real yield comes from fees, and um, that's like the only things that'll really make it um it's already been proven like you look at the biggest products ave um compound like all of those ones that were just minting inflation um they're they're all like they do their reports and they're like the actual fees and revenue they garnered is like 10 percent of the actual inflation that they gave out so yeah it's just it's been proven that it's not sustainable that model so now everyone's moving to a more of a, a sustainable model yeah, for sure. I mean, it makes sense that they need something more sustainable. I uh, I can't believe I just saw a 30 ETH clip going to Shia again. Just weird. weird. Weird, weird. These guys are wild, man. They're just they're just buying that chart up. <laughs> yes, they are, man. We have a uh, we have Dr. DeFi. What's up, man? Thanks for joining from uh, the Shitcoins are fun community. How you doing, bro? All right, maybe he's not on the speaker panel. Shows him for me. Um yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited, man. I think we're gonna have an absolute bomb weekend. Uh, it's gonna be hotter than all can be, but uh, you know that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. <laughs> In uh, the end of August uh, of this year is just absolutely brutal. I mean, the, how's the weather been, Coco, for you? I, I, San Diego's got to be absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's so nice, bro. It's sunshine and palm trees. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful women walking around bro we're good we're gucci we're doing we're doing great yeah aver meanwhile average and i came and walk outside before we melt um so we're gonna we're gonna be we might even get um, matching umbrellas for this trip you know for the sun not the rain i mean i love this shit dude like i grew up in in ohio like this is i don't care how hot it is i'm i'm happy with sunshine and palm trees yeah i think uh I think once we get down there, bro, like Saturday during the day should be pretty cool. Maybe we'll go to like a, a value in times pool or something. He was he was texting me if we were staying at the hotel or something, but you said we're a couple blocks away. Yeah, we're right around the corner. Um, I have a strong suspicion that everyone is going to sleep all day during the day. That's that's my suspicion. Oh, yeah, it is Miami, isn't it? Completely forgot where you're going. Hey, I mean, come Last time you guys went to Miami, what was the sleep schedule like? Oh, that was so long ago. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember at all. But Cryptomatic, what up, man? 
What are you coming there? Are you going to Miami or are you uh are you staying in Arizona? Dude, I, I don't need the humidity added to the heat. I'll just uh, stick with Is my it desert curl your hair? Oh, your hair gets curly, doesn't it? <laughs> He's bald, by the way. He doesn't have any hair. So his hair doesn't get curly. Um, but no, I, we kind of covered everything that I wanted to go into today. It really was about the news um, that the whole Pepe thing kind of just took everyone by storm. I, and then also, I mean, like the tornado cash guys, there's there's like a obviously the crypto people are going to be biased that they didn't do anything wrong. But there's apparently a group of like crypto people that are known at some degree that are saying that they that they're not getting them on any plausible stuff uh, for money, you know, moving around those the money and stuff, which doesn't make sense to me. It sounds like tornado cash was exactly what they're what it was a purpose for. Well, but- the the thing is is like with the tornado cash is like it's it's already been proven that like they so they're saying that they colluded with the, the reason why I think that that's, that's all bullshit like why they're saying like they, they colluded with like uh, terrorist groups and stuff is because they didn't wh- what do they need to collude with it's an open source protocol the guys that had the crypto they're trying to launder money they could do it without talking to anybody like what it's they did they need to ask them for permission to use an open source protocol that people are using for privacy. It's bullshit. They're, they're, it, they're, they're arresting people for writing open source code. And it's one of the biggest kind of, you know, I would say like one of the biggest like encroachments on digital freedom that anyone's ever done. Like, dude, if I have a, if I, I said this earlier in my group chat, if I have a piece of paper and I want to write down the code for tornado cash and let it blow in the wind, like that's my right. Like they're literally stopping people from writing open source code and throwing them in jail. So dig deeper into that and you you know you probably yeah, be a wild. little bit irritated. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I was I was probably going to get irritated if I did deeper. I I actually like I mean that the group that you're talking about seems like they know crypto. It's just hard because like they're not going to listen to crypto bros. But um, but you need you need privacy to have a capitalist society, bro. Like you do. You cannot have a capitalist society without privacy. Like it's just a fact. And that's what that was at the end of the day was a privacy tool. Yes, it was used for illicit funds, but it was also used for people to to have privacy. And like if you start taking away the ability for people to have privacy, um, you know, we're going down a whole other rabbit hole. I won't even go because I could rant on this shit forever. But yeah, (laughs) of course. Of course, man. Um, Nah, we don't have to go too far down that. I mean, it's it's obviously just hot in the news. It's it's an invasion. And we all know they're coming for all of us. I mean, it's it's crazy. But right now, it's uh, it's been a lot of uh, it. Really hasn't been too much going on. I mean, like, there's the news has been kind of light outside of that stuff. Um, I don't think really anybody's been doing much more than looking at DeFi stuff. And I mean, I don't I don't know. Like, I, I'm not quite sure. It, it seems like we've reached a, a point where there's so much like jeetery like that i don't uh, like you said in a tweet earlier i don't this is a, this is an all-time high of jeets which is very very difficult to like identify what's going on um outside of that because you're just watching coins go up and go straight down at the fastest pace it's ever been so i think I it's mean, if it's if if like yeets are out that bad at this point just put in shorts instead of going long i mean you can make money on the way down there well, is an all coins on DeFi aren't like on leverage trading platforms yet. Um, if you know, it's a lot of them are newer pairs and stuff, but the whole premise is like a lot of them are launching with like telegram bots. And um, a lot of it is very like, you know, my, the, the funny thing about like telegram, it reminds me of like the MIRC days, like where you'd use like a chat prompt in order to like do things. It's literally like what telegram reminds me of just that a scale, like that's a little bit more appealing um you know but serve the same pay- ser- serves the ser- same purpose um if irc back in the day had a chance to like actually do like what you know some of these different bot things that would be pretty crazy but overall it seems like it's basically a chat tool and then you use it so there's like no graphics so i'm really interested to see the evolution of what these uh tech you know these new technologies that people are identifying and and basically cross pollinizing pollinizing into different things like uh, ordering Uber Eats from a Telegram, like is Telegram going to be that next like platform that houses a lot of uh, automation tools for the average person in the back end, like for maybe like a, um, 
you know, maybe for something that gets closer to like a, an Alexa or a Siri type of profile for uh, crypto. So really interesting to see the future of, uh, of these bots, but the coins that are launching attached to them are just absolutely like money. Like it's just, they're just basically building a bag off people right now. And it, I'm hoping that we see some more like of those times where Pepe came out, like now as Pepe drowns, like what's the next meta and how long is this meta going to be here? And then when is the next? And hopefully a lot of this liquidity at some point in time will come to start, you know, start looking back towards NFTs um, as like the market shifts. So, you know, it's not right now, but uh, it uh, it's interesting uh, as the, as the NFT price is still continuing to plummet. Um, I, I'm really, you know, but the, the, the title of the space was bullish or bearish. And really before we close this down, because we do have a meeting on 15 minutes, um, you know, are you bullish or bearish, Coco? And we'll just go down the line on the on the event where the floor price of the board ape ecosystem or a mutant goes up or down. I mean, I've I don't really I've kind of like stopped caring at this point because I'm just gonna hold my eight to zero or hopefully it'll come back. You know, like I, I'm not gonna stress myself out over something that I wasn't planning on selling anyway, right? No, um, for sure. For yeah, sure. yeah, so but I it's you know it's it's funny right like the the thing is is like nfts they have they they literally have more like use case than coins like real world use case than than erc20s right like there's there's more cool stuff you can do with them from a from like just the average retail person um they can help with digital identity you know they can they can proof of ownership you can you can actually do stuff with the metadata which is really cool um, they're just they're just a lot more there's like a lot of cool stuff that you can do with nfts but i i was saying this again last night i was saying the same thing is i think that nfts the prices are a little bit of victims of circumstance right because it was their first major bull run and they didn't they didn't start in the like they didn't start popping off in a bear market like there wasn't huge interest in nfts like they sprung out of nowhere and took the industry by storm and onboarded millions of people and onboarded like pop culture into crypto right in a lot of ways but now this is the first time that nfts have to weather the storm of a bear market they have to prove that they can make it through the bear market and that people will get bullish on them again i'm betting that the nfts are going to come back bigger and better than ever but it's hard to speculate when that'll happen, right? The big run-up for NFTs was actually way after uh, everything went parabolic for for Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and altcoins, right? So they, I'm if I had to bet, because I'm a guy that really follows cycles and I, I judge all my stuff on on cyclical behavior of the markets because it's the only thing that is not speculation that we can look back and find historical data on is is how the cycles perform. I think NFTs are going to come back after. Uh, Bitcoin and ETH hit all-time highs. I think they're going to do well because there's going to be more liquidity in the market, but I think you're going to see the next mega run-up and just like crazy charge for NFTs a little bit delayed because they were delayed in the last bull run. So like, why wouldn't I go back to historical data, the only historical data I have, and use that as a benchmark, right? So that's that's the way I look at it. No, great take, man. I mean, I remember you talking about this a little last night. And yeah, that's, that's a fantastic way to look at it. Um, let's ask a few more people and then we're going to close it down so we don't miss this meeting in 10. Uh, Cryptomedic, are you bearish or bullish on uh, on uh, the uh, BAYC collections at, uh, after this event this weekend? Yeah, I'm still not going to be able to afford one. But um, I don't think events, you know, I mean, if we do see a pump, I think it'll be minor. Um, you know, I, I'm more interested in, Things like what's happening with the Utes and D gods, with them now making adjustments to points parlor. Is that going to be enough? Like, I think it's very interesting this back and forth, right, between communities and, and founders creating value. I think that discussion and watching that discussion, that's what I'm bullish on. Cool, cool. Average. Jamie Christmas. Do we do we even have to ask this question? Like we're in the middle of a bear market. I know you NFT guys have never been through a bear market before. I get it. I understand it. It sucks. It's grim. Feels like it's never coming back, but it is. Relax. It's all going to be over soon. It's painful on the way down, and it's especially painful in the time-based capitulation. Um, they're not. Yuga's not going anywhere. Like, do you think that? 
that that board apes are going somewhere when someone can buy a PFP and in, instantly start to multiply their following on Twitter, gain exposure, gain access um, to not only, you know, additional Yuga products, but access to people that they didn't have access to before. I mean, like we, we, we gotta, we gotta get real here and, and, and think people need to stop freaking out. I know it's the first time a lot of the NFT guys have been through this, but shit, I mean, give it a year. You, you won't be talking about this anymore. Exactly. I, I think that it's just, like I said, I, I, like what you're saying, I agree with you hundred percent, you know, they're, they're a victim of circumstance right now, right? Like it's just the, the sign of it's the times right now. Then, you know, a year from now, it's going to be completely different. That's right. Do you agree with those points guys? Well, no. Awesome. Thanks for uh, everyone stopping by the space here. It's always good to get a break for an hour from uh, work and uh, charts and anything else that we're all doing in our days um, and just kind of kick it with the boys. So thanks for uh, everyone kind of coming and hanging out and chilling on uh, this Thursday evening. I'm going to go to this. Uh, we have a meeting here in a minute with uh, with the collection. And then uh, I, last night, late, what was that? Coco, like six and honest and Machiavelli just like wind up in Tampa. So I told them I'd go grab a bite with them before uh, the Miami trip on there on the way down there too. But that was just so funny last night. They came out of nowhere. Um, and they nice. went... <laughs> so that was funny. But anyway, thanks everyone for joining the space. If you want to take it away, uh, Enzo and uh, close us out. Um, we will see you guys next Thursday, 6 PM for uh, no, six, episode 63 of Top Talk. See you later. All right. Thanks for uh, allowing me to close out this space really quick. Uh, one of the things that my professors uh, mentioned inside of uh, inside of the real world, which I think is uh, extremely important for all of us to keep in mind, is a doctor goes to school for an extra 12 years before he, en he er ends up earning $300,000 a year. So for us to develop the skills that we need to make that money, it is impossible for us to think that we're going to get rich overnight. So I think putting time into perspective and understanding the time that it takes people to become professionals at certain fields is important so that we don't fall in love with the idea that we're magically going to become rich overnight. I mean, even Coco said it today. He's been in the industry for uh, the better half of uh, half a decade or something like that, he said. So, yeah, I mean, and he's catching 100 X's. So it's it takes a while to learn the skill. And that's what you, you need. You need time to learn any skill in life. And uh, I hope you take the time. And time doesn't mean six months. It means years of perfecting your craft. So with that being said, Medic, if you want to play some music, take us out. Yeah, cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah. I mix my E with Polygon Pythagoras. Let him mad. Yeah, crypto cash. Yeah, I seen the metaverse through Meta, told my eyes a megaphone. Customize my MP skin to optimize my flesh and bone. Phase one evolution, revolution. Smart contracts inside your smartphone. Phase one evolution, revolution. Help me help these ET phone Whole body markerless motion capture. The metaverse broken after the metatope golden era. The whitelist still open. Hurry up, what you need? Golden chariot. Holy virgins that's holding cherubims, paving the road with fairy dust. Create, the, create the avatar of your wildest dreams, yeah. And use it inside your live stream. Dreams, and all yeah. your metaverses, favorite games and widescreen Metatope, visualize your digital ID yeah. I seen the metaverse through Metatope, my eyes a megaphone Customize my empty skin to optimize my flesh and bone yeah. Metatope is your mirror to the metaverse yeah. I seen the metaverse through Metatope, my eyes a megaphone Customize my empty skin to optimize my flesh and bone